I'm back. Governments around the world are hiding their secrets in highly secure facilities far away from prying eyes. These places have become focal points of conspiracy theorists and those trying to uncover the truth of what our governments are doing behind closed doors. I got the classic cryptid message, Professor. Maybe it never was an Air Force underground facility at Macrohanish. Okay. Holy... Got it. So before I tell you how my bizarre brain works and why this person might be onto something really big, I have to fill you in with a bit of my background because this story is complex. This is a good one. So as a wee kid, I moved to Kintyre, Campbelltown area with my parents. My dad's in the um, government, I'll put it like that. And they wanted to build quite a large house overlooking the sea. Well, they couldn't because there wasn't a local builder or contractor who was available at the time. So we had to rent somewhere temporarily and we ended up renting a cottage in the village of Macrohanish, right next door to this secret hangar. I know because I got my camera taken off me by the constant security guards who were really not wanting teenage kids looking at what was going on at the through the barbed wire fence at the base but there's another strange thing the cottage was built there because it was the headquarters of the coal mine coal mine why is there a coal mine professor in the scottish highlands well People who don't know Scottish geology, Scotland has the southern uplands, the borders, then it has this flat plain where all Edinburgh, Glasgow, and all the heavy industry of Scotland is lots of coal, lots of steel, and then the highlands. And that central belt is a big valley, a geological area where there's interesting stuff lots of coal. You can follow that rift valley out into the west of Scotland where eventually it dips down under the Atlantic Ocean at Macrohanish. Macrohanish is of course north of Northern Ireland, a clear run from Scotland to Newfoundland with nowhere to fly over and the same with the ocean but we'll get on to that. Macrohanish was used for transatlantic telecommunication it's a perfect place not to be interfered with. But it also has coal. It's the last place on this Rift Valley that you can mine coal. And there was a national coal board, NCB Colliery, where we lived in the cottage. It had long closed down. It didn't have a shaft. It had a slopey mine with a big conveyor belt. I used to play on it. And uh, miners and horses and things would go down on the conveyor belt or by the steps and work underneath the RAF base and out under the ocean. Now, it closed, it flooded, there was a couple of fires, disasters, and it, it maybe probably wasn't that economic eventually, so it did close down. Uh, there was a wee railway. That, it was great. It, as a kid, it was a great place. A coal mine and a RF base. I was in heaven. It was really a great place to grow up. And that's why I'm so interested to, to know what really was going on there, because there were so many mysteries. My dad kind of worked there. He was a liaison between the RAF, the British government, and these Americans who were there. But we'll get on to the Americans in a minute. Anywho, back to the coal mine. The coal mine had lots of geological surveys. You can get in the local library all the strata of what's underneath Macrohanish and out under the sea. It's very well surveyed because it was a mine. Makes sense? Hold that thought. So here I am in my old age, still knocking on about Macrohanish, trying to solve some of the secrets. And everybody's telling me that there's a secret underground base underneath Macrohanish. And um, there's no real evidence that there is. Nobody's ever found the entrance. Uh, and there's a number of problems with it. <laughs> 
As viewers know, I like to ask the big question. And I think one of the big questions about the Makrohanish secret underground base is, why do they actually need one? I think the secret hangar, the Gaiden hangar, is enormous. It would fit the shuttle, the it would fit Concorde, Aurora, secret aircraft, SR-71s, whatever was flying in, and they definitely were flying into Macranish. I mean, I don't deny that. But why would they need to put them underground? It, I think only they needed to cover them from the weather, terribly windy place, and I think that they needed to be able to refuel them with normal and exotic fuels. And here's the second big question. So we know it was an RAF base. We know it was a diversion airfield. We know that it, because my mates worked on it, surfaced the runway with special stealth paint that also can show up in a diversion emergency with a special NATO goggles in their aircraft so you can easily land. The wind is always predictable. It has something called a VORTAC, a VOR TAC, and it's right down the end of the runway. It's a perfect diversion airfield from everything from space to high Mach number aircraft. It definitely was used for that. But let's look at another big picture, and that is there was a contingent of US Navy SEALs, a SEAL team. And for many years, they were secret. We knew that the Americans there, we didn't really know what they did. Eventually it came out that, that they were a Navy SEAL team. They did have access to so-called nuclear depth charges. And their possible mission, of course, it's secret, was to somehow patrol the North Atlantic and do commando missions using nukes and non-nukes in that area. And then the plot thickens. So eventually my parents built the house. It was in Campbelltown. It overlooked the POL. POL is a Navy NATO secret underground hidden fuel depot. And I've dug into the secrets of the POL depot before for you. It's mainly bunker fuel. It's mainly Navy fuel for ships and knowing people who worked there they said that we had some specials we had some wee exotic tanks that had stuff for aviation and as a kid i used to play behind the depot and there was a not so secret but secret pipeline that went from the depot with about about 10 inch diameter pipeline that was above the ground uh, all the way from the depot in Campbelltown, seven miles out to RAF Macrohanish with fuel. And the POL jetty was a Zulu base, one of the very few in Britain that could deal with a nuclear accident. Uh, a submarine or a nuclear powered ship, I guess, but submarine could dock there and they had the way of dealing with a nuclear incident. So it was, a, it was an important place. So what does that all add up to? We have an RAF base with a big hangar, with no real evidence that there's anything underneath it as a secret base, maybe. We have a fuel depot seven miles away in Campbelltown with a 10 inch diameter pipeline full of Navy fuel for ships going to an airport. And we have a US Navy SEAL team based at the RAF station, but Macrohanish is on this, Macrohanish Bay. Also geographically wonderful, north of all landmass, open to the Atlantic, very good access to the sea, but no harbour, no jetty, nothing. It's just a sand dunes, a nice golf course, and a beach. How did the seals actually deploy? What was the Navy fuel pipeline going to an airport for? Why isn't there, apparently, and why would they actually need a sunken underground aircraft hangar? And then the big clue came. Currently, the airport's been sold on a lease to the Mac Business Park. They have engineering businesses there, they do some filming. Hopefully it might even open up as a spaceport. You can fly there on a commercial airliner, 
British Airways, Logan Air, I don't know who it is these days, up to, up to Glasgow and the Inner Hebrides, the Air Medical Evacuation Helicopter can come down from, from Glasgow to evacuate you from the Kintyre area. It's a very useful base, but the deal is the Mac business people have it on a lease that can be returned instantly if the military want to reactivate it. The people actually paying for the upkeep of Macrohanish militarily, the runway, the navigation equipment, anything secret, is NATO's U.S. Navy Division North Atlantic. So hang on. This raises some big questions. A SEAL team from the U.S. Navy with no port. A POL depot seven miles away in Campbelltown with a 10-inch pipeline pumping... Navy fuel to an RAF base, and the RAF base is now managed by the US Navy North Atlantic NATO headquarters? Why? So what this clandestine email to me directly, because of my filmmaking, is implying is really fascinating, and it's all to do with NASA and docking stations and the Cold War and submarines. Governments around the world are hiding their secrets in highly secure facilities far away from prying eyes. These places have become focal points of conspiracy theorists and those trying to uncover the truth of what our governments are doing behind closed doors. You and I know from Blue Peter <laughs> that the only thing restricting a nuclear submarine is the amount of food on board. When they run out of baked beans, they have to come back to Holy Lock or Fast Lane and refuel. Well, when KT-123 returns, it's a bit of a giveaway. Wouldn't it be better if you're a nuclear submarine that could last forever underwater? It can make its own air, it can make its own water, but it can't make its own baked beans, could somehow refurbish the crew change shifts and put on new McDonald burgers under sea. So an undersea Navy submarine docking station was explored. There's almost definitely one at Catalina Island, quite near San Diego, off the west coast of the US. There's also one in Andros, which is the Bahamas and possibly one in the Canary Islands. And just maybe the secret underground base at Macrohanish was never an RAF aircraft secret base. It was a submarine docking station offshore from Macrohanish with access for the Navy SEALs paid for by the Navy with a pipeline for fuel and supplies from the Campbelltown POL jetty, policed above ground by the SEAL team based at the RAF Macrohanish, and all the time we're thinking it's Aurora and SR-71s, which it still could be, but they're just using the hangar. What's really going on is that under Macrohanish Bay, is a submarine docking station that was built using the data from the Macrohanish Coal Mine Geology Survey to build this tunnel down from the RAF airport, underground, undersea, into a docking station in the North Atlantic. Now, I have no idea. If you work for the Navy and are prepared to say or know anything about it, let me know. But suddenly, Navy SEALs, oh yeah. Pipeline, oh yeah. No real evidence that there's anything really underneath the Gaynor hangar. I mean, there might be, but I mean, you can park your Cessna in there and somebody would have broken in with a GoPro camera and found it. Nobody has. And I think the two big smoking guns are these. One, that list of contractors all dealing with undersea, underground facilities. And two, who's actually running it today? NATO North Atlantic Navy. The truth is down there.